let's take a look at trend number one for this week. It's Richmond. It's the short track. So we go to our first, not our first, we go to our second short track of the season. Bristol, of course, being the other. Martinsville is coming up. And we also have another track to keep an eye on when we're breaking down the race this week, and that's Phoenix. And that's because Richmond is a short, flat track, just like Martinsville and just like Phoenix. So I'd be looking at Bristol, Martinsville, and Phoenix. Those are the three tracks that you should be looking at this week. Um, keeping in mind, though, it's kind of hard to look at Martinsville all right, I think I misspelled that there. Wait, no, nope, wrong one. It's kind of hard to look at Martinsville because they haven't raced at Martinsville yet. Uh, but you can just take a look at what happened last year. Um, but I'm really, right now, because of we're in a new year, just, just like I mentioned before, hey, Toyota, just like our viewer pointed out, it's a different car, so it's a different year. So let me, I, I'm kind of just looking at Bristol and Phoenix, to tell you the truth, even though you should you should also throw in Martinsville if you would like but I'm really just taking a look at Bristol and Phoenix since we have seen both of them this year. Next up, eight of the last nine winners. Now, this is a racetrack, even though it's short, qualifying does not matter that much. Eight of the last nine winners have started outside the top six. So outside the top three rows, four of the last six outside the top 12. All right. By the way, that winner... Back in 2018, that's Kyle Busch. We get to Busch, who historically has been pretty dominant at this racetrack. So qualifying is not going to be as big a deal as it has been so far this season in some of these other races that we've previewed. There have been seven different race winners since Martin Shorks Jr. swept in 2019. So is it going to be an eighth straight? Well... If it is an eighth straight, let's take a look at the drivers. So if, if you're going to go by that, and I don't, uh, but I mean, it, I think it's interesting though. I mean, I, I'm not saying I don't always go by it, but because I think sometimes it's interesting to do that. But I don't know, the last seven, I'm not really sure that I would, uh, I'd, I'd, I'd worry too much about it, but it is a trend. So that would be... It would have to be one of these other drivers. It can't. In other words, it cannot be Brad Keselowski, Alex Bowman, Martin Truex Jr., Denny Hamlin, Kevin Harvick, Kyle Larson, or Chris Buescher. So if you're going to go by an eighth straight different race winner at Richmond, it cannot be one of those drivers. Let's start alphabetically with, because no AJ this week, with Christopher Bell. Now, Bell is one of the co-favorites at 4-1. to one. And you know what I think about 4-1 to one shots. I don't like him too much. And now, I, what I will do, as we did a couple weeks ago, is if I've got three heavy favorites, well, I'll pick one of them. Uh, and I was able to luckily do that a couple weeks ago with Denny Hamlin. This week, we have two. That is just that. that, that. Now, sometimes I might take one out of the two. You go, okay, I'll, I'll do that. But... I think you're either better going away from both drivers completely or take them both because you, you can take them both. Unfortunately, well, or fortunately, if you win, if you take them both, but you better win uh, because that's all you have. You got two drivers because you can't take anyone else. If you're going to take both of them, you can't take anyone else. You're not going to make any money. Now, if you take them both and you put a thousand dollars on both, then you're gonna you're gonna come out ahead. You, you'll you'll uh, let's say you invest two thousand on two drivers, one of them wins, yeah, you get four thousand back. You're up three grand. That's not bad. Okay, that's okay. That's uh, it's a good payday. If you have a thousand or a few thousand dollars to wager, but you get my drift. So I'm just not gonna go that way, and I'll explain why. Now Bell, uh, he, he's actually not even one of my top three picks. He is uh, my fourth. Uh, for matter of fact, is I don't know if he's actually. I don't even think he's one of CJ's top three picks this week. Um, but Bell is without question. I understand why he's a favorite, but not at four to one for me. 
He's never won here. I mean, you're getting, you're getting four to one on a driver that's never won a race at this racetrack. I mean, come on. Stop at the four to one. Uh, Bell, though, as you can see, excellent stats. Runner up uh, occurred. Um, when did that occur? Um, I'm not sure when that was, but all I know is is that he did have that fourth place finish last year when he led 26 laps from the 21st uh, pole position, which is pretty good. But again, it shows you that even when he started 21st, he was still able to lead 26 laps and finish a very strong fourth. And uh, Bell, now take a see the thing that really makes Bell interesting is his Xfinity Series history. Look at that. Out of five Xfinity Series races, Christopher Bell has three wins. And he's also, there weren't fluky wins either. He's led 457 career laps in five Xfinity Series races. So he's dominated. By the way, his runner-up came uh, in the summer race back in 2022. So, um, but look, the last time Christopher Bell raced at richmond it was last year's july race and he finished 20th so that's the last impression we have of christopher bell here at richmond coming off a second place finish last week that was pretty and, and again even though he finished second last week it, it never really looked like he was going to win that race you know byron was so strong and I don't know, you could say, well, what if he had a few more laps? I'm not even sure if he had a few more laps. You know, maybe eventually he catches Byron because of the tires wearing out. But yeah, uh, again, I don't know what you want to say about Bell's strategy. Maybe you can let, let me know what you thought about it. But um, it is what it is. And they still finished a very strong second. So now at Bristol, Bell was 10th. And then of course he won Phoenix. So that makes Bell... Uh, you, you got the, the, the win at Phoenix, you got the extremely strong results at Xfinity, and you have a pretty good run of four top fives and a runner-up in seven races here. So he's done just about everything at Richmond except win in the Cup Series, but you're paying the price at 4-1. to one. Next up is Ryan Blaney at 15-1, to one. and to tell you the truth, uh, this is a time that I think Ryan Blaney should probably be about 20-1. to one. Because he only has, as you can see, three top 10s out of 15. This is not one of his better racetracks. But the one thing that is interesting, if you're looking for a little bit of a tiny mini long shot, is the fact that Blaney's average results, as you can see, of his career is 20th. But in the last eight races, they've gotten better. And I think that matters. Matter of fact, he led 128 laps from the pole. In 2022, he finished seventh in that race. He also hit the top 10 all five in the Xfinity Series. Okay, but last year did not have a top 10. His best finish was 14th. Never led a lap in the Xfinity Series. Matter of fact, I'm not even sure if he's led a lap here in the Cup Series. And actually, of course he has. I just I just mentioned that the, the 2022 run. So and 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 so I I think just by that alone. That type of performance, and and he's a younger, he's still a young driver, and he has gotten better at this track. That's but I'm um, fifteen to one is just not good enough. I mean, I, I, if you're giving me twenty or twenty five to one, that maybe I'm throwing a couple of bucks on Blaney as a long shot play, sort of like his teammate Joey Logano, which we'll get into. But I have no idea why Ryan Blaney is fifteen to one, and Joey Logano is twenty two to one. And we're going to get into Logano's career statistics here, which are 100 times better than Ryan Blaney. So jump all over Logano, but we'll get into that a little bit later on. Blaney was fifth at Phoenix, even though, of course, we know he could be much better at Phoenix. Didn't really have a great day at Phoenix. Um, so, yeah, it is kind of surprising that he doesn't perform better at Richmond. But you know, we've had some glimpses lately. Uh, I'm just not getting the number, though, at 15 to 1. Bowman is next. And here's a number that you must take advantage of. Bowman is 50 to 1. Now, how on earth is Bowman 50 to 1 and Ryan Blaney 15 to 1? I mean, seriously, what is that about? I mean, Bowman, they both raced 15 times at Richmond. Yet, Bowman's got a win. Blaney hasn't come close to a win yet. And I, I, I don't know. 
I I mean the only difference is is that Blaney had that you know that that pole and he led 128 laps a couple of years ago and Bowman only led 10 laps when he won his race in 21 he's only led 19 laps in 15 races but still 50 to 1 Bowman uh had a top 10 last year okay he is coming off back-to-back fourth place finishes on the season and he was fourth at Bristol in one of those top fives I, I I don't know look I think what happens sometimes maybe with Bowman because he's not big one of these big lap leaders and all that that sometimes it that gets uh, uh statistically speaking you know I I think maybe it it, it kind of makes him look sort of like what I was just saying with the comparison to Blaney and well he let a lot of laps and Bowman didn't but I don't I don't know I honestly don't take advantage of this I really have no explanation why why Bowman's 50 to 1 none okay next uh let's go to Briscoe we don't spend much time on Briscoe because he hasn't had a good run here as you can see but I did want to bring him up because he's doing okay so far this season compared to last season. And um, he has, I mean, he looks like a solid top 15. Maybe he could sneak into the top 10. You know, last year, those are, considering how bad he was last year, that was good for him. And he was 13th at Bristol and 9th at Phoenix. So if you're looking for someone, uh, you know, maybe a top 15, or maybe you'll, you'll probably get a good number even at, uh, if he finishes in the top 10. It may not be a bad play there. Chris Busher, he's going to be one of our picks. Busher at 11 to 1, coming off the win in July from the 26th position. Okay, so you got that. That's not it. You got third back in 2022. So two top fives out of the last three, including a win. In his last three this season, all top tens and a runner up. The runner up was at Phoenix. Seventh at Bristol. So all of that says, yeah, especially since I am not taking the four to one shots. Now I can take some of these drivers in this area and see if I can uh, capitalize uh, on these drivers. And Bush is one of them for sure. Kyle Bush. I mean, he is a madman here. Look at those stats. I mean, he is just. Uh, I mean, that's over 50%, over 50% top fives, over in his career. I mean, look at that, 28 out of 36 in the top 10. Average results, seventh. Here's the problem. Um, With the new car, he, he has three top tens out of four, which is okay, but just one top five. Most importantly, as you can see, two laps. That's it. Just two laps with the new car. So that's a problem. When you take a look at how many he led before that, and now he only has two with the new car. Okay, but you're getting 15 to 1. And now you know why I think Blaney, sh- is t- the price is too low. Because there's no way Ryan Blaney should be the same odds as Kyle Bush. No way. So I'm going to wager on Bush. I'm just going to try to get my money back. Because I want to see, I need to see a good top 10, a good top 10 this week. And maybe even a top 5. And then we can go ahead and get serious about Kyle Busch in his next race where he's you know, okay at, uh, you know, in, you know, at a track. But Because uh, ninth was okay last week. But at least it got him, he had those issues and issues and issues. He had three straight bad runs. So at least he got something on the positive coming in here. Still got to take advantage of 15 to 1. Last week's winner, William Byron. Can he win three already in a season? I say no, um, even though I took him last week. Fact is, he just he hasn't, doesn't have a great resume here. And matter of fact, to tell you the truth, I think he should be 15 to 1. If you're going to have Blaney at 15 to 1, you should have Byron at 15 to 1. So I'd have Byron at 15 and Blaney at 20 or 25. Um, last year, yes, he did have a good run in April in this race last year. But overall... It is the results that matter. And the results have not been good. Now, Byron also led 122 laps 
in this race in 2022. So the interesting thing is, in this race, the April race, the last two years, he's led 239 combined laps. So that, but the results just aren't there. And he's 11 to 1. So um, here's an example, another one. Busher, 11 to 1. I'm getting Busher at 11 to 1. Byron's 11 to 1. Yet Busher's got a win. It was a strong win last year. And he also had a third place finish a couple of starts ago. And they're the same odds. That's why I am definitely on Busher and not on Byron this week. Ross Chastain. This is a week to pass on Ross. The good thing is you're getting 20 to 1. That's why I had to do a double take and see if maybe it was a bargain for me. But it's just not. Uh, as you can see, he doesn't really have much. He does have the third last year. And that's it. He was sixth at Phoenix, where we expected more. Uh, he, he does have three top fives out of his last four on the Xfinity series, as you see. The only good thing is he's 20 to 1. But, yeah, I don't know. I mean, that would be the only reason that I would. I, that's, that's why I considered it. But I just uh, I couldn't take him. Austin Dillon, who's not off to a good start, um, does have six career top 10s out of 19. And he was ninth in one of the races last year. He's led a career 56 laps out of 19. But he's only led one lap in the last six. Chase Elliott. Man, one of these weeks, we're going to get Chase Elliott. we got to hope what we do. We're getting him when he's victorious because the odds are beneficial. 17 to 1, but this is not the week to take him. So history speaking, it just hasn't been all that great of a track. He's a few top fives, as you can see, but he's, uh, he, he's only led 95 career laps, which is not much. And then the only race last year, uh, he didn't really you know, have a, a car to remember. So sort of like Chastain, the only good thing is he's 17 to 1. But unlike Chastain, Chase just hasn't shown anything yet. He hasn't led. I don't even know if he's on a lap yet this year. All right, Ty Gibbs, 8 to 1. Now, what bothers me the most about Gibbs here is the obvious, and those are the odds. Now, Let's talk about, uh, we already had a, a bell uh, to, uh, to talk about with Toyota. But let's, let's, and then we opened the show about the whole Toyota thing. But this is a good, a, good, a good time to kind of go all in on the Toyota. Because when I was doing the research before I even saw the odds this week, I felt the top four picks should be the drivers who are the top four picks. I am 100% agreeing with the odds this week, or at least the fact that the favorites this week are the Toyota drivers. Uh, so what do you got? Uh, Bell, uh, Gibbs, Hamlin, Truex. They should be the favorite. Now, why? Not because of the name of the race. Uh, of the race. It has nothing to do with it at all. But Toyota had the top two cars at Bristol. Toyota had two of the top three at Phoenix and won the race. And Toyota, again, as I said at the, at the front, yes, they are showing something early on this season. So I felt that along with the, 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 the stats of those drivers. Not Gibbs, okay? Because th th that's the reason why, I don't know about 8-1, to one, but Truex, Hamlin, and Bell, especially Hamlin and Truex. I mean, Hamlin and Truex have... A tremendous histories here. Uh, Bell, really good little history without a win yet. And Gibbs, less so, which is why you're getting double the money. But still, I'd rather take Gibbs than Bell because I'm getting double the money. And I am taking him this week. And we also know that he is close to winning. And maybe this is the week to do it. So look, the three cup races don't tell me anything that I'd be interested in. Why would I interest you? What? That tells me nothing about 8-1. to one. But he's got an Xfinity Series win. And we know, based on what we've seen so far this year with Gibbs, like I said, that he is really close to getting it done. Um, he was ninth at Bristol, led 137 laps. He was third at Phoenix. And 
and and and then keep this in mind. He's second in points. Okay, that's your people who are who don't pay attention to that because I don't honestly I don't really pay attention to that much this early in the season. He's second in points, and he's got three top fives in his last four. Now I gave you two of them. No, actually, I gave you one, uh, Phoenix. But the, the 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 Bristol, the ninth at Bristol, he won both stages. Don't forget. So in his last, so with the three top fives out of the last four. The only one that's not a top five is the Bristol race that he won both stages. That's how dialed in Gibbs is right now. And that's the reason why you're getting odds of eight to one. But I'm okay with that. I'm willing to, to, to gamble that he's going to get it done. Now, as I was saying, though, when I was going over my picks, um, he is not uh, one of my top two picks. Matter of fact, I think I have him. What did I say? I have him third or fourth, and that's only because of the odds of eight to one. I wish I was getting ten to one, eleven to one, but I understand why the odds are what they are. Everybody's hot on this kid now. You know what? Eight to one. It's uh, better than four to one. That's for sure. All right. Let's now go to the next driver. His team. This. This is what I'm talking about. Look at that, Denny Hamlin. Now that's big time. 18 top fives. Just like Kyle, look at that. Over 50% of the top five. He's got four wins. Look at that other line. 13 of the last 16, he has finished in the top six with three runner ups and two wins. He's got the average career result of 8.5 at this track. But. Hamlin is is the reason Hamlin's four to one and Bush is five uh, fifteen to one. Big difference, and that has more to do with how the drivers are going now this season. But take a look at Denny Hamlin, winning Bristol. Now he was eleventh at Phoenix, but don't forget he had that mishap. What about what was it, hundred laps to go, something like that, and probably raced too hard with Chastain, I believe it was. And got into him, ruined his day. Otherwise, he could have won that race. He could have won both of these races, Bristol and Phoenix. And and get this. Uh, I'm gonna let's see. I gotta see four, five, six. Check out these eight races at Richmond where he's led laps. Okay, and I'm just gonna go in order of the timeline. He has led 197 laps. One race, 207 laps, another race, 189, 202, 251, 299, 148, and 381 laps. I mean, that's eight separate times where he has just had a really good car at Richmond over his career. And the way the start he's gotten off to, uh, why wouldn't I think that he's uh, going to be the, the driver of the beat, except... That I have a driver that I am going to take over Denny Hamlin. We'll get into it in just a little bit. But yes, if I'm taking, do I take Hamlin? Do I take Bell? Do I split it up? If I did, I would definitely take Hamlin just based on that history. Because again, Bell just has never won here yet. But I just didn't feel like I wanted to go down that road, which is why I took neither of them. Okay. CJ took them both, by the way. Not, not That is completely in line with what I said in the beginning of our completely different strategies. Next up, Brad Kozlowski. I, and I took Kozlowski this week. You're getting 13 to 1. He's got a uh, pretty good history here. Um, so you know, ha half the time he's in the top 10. Um, now, the problem is he hasn't had a top 5 since the win. One of the wins back in 2020. But a couple things. First of all, he did have good showings last year, even though neither were top 5s. And at Bristol, he was third. At Phoenix, he was fourth. So I think that really does obviously mean something. And I'm getting 13 to 1. Kyle Larson. Larson was the last driver I knocked out because I, I really did like the fact that I was getting 9 to 1 with the defending champ. And we're talking Kyle Larson here. Um, the thing is, Larson's been good here, but he hasn't been great. He's just been good. Um, but I, I've seen Larson, I've seen his odds uh, be 6-1 to one in these situations. But I think the, the difference is, is you've got these other drivers, the Toyotas, 
that are just hogging everything up. That that's why I think you should take advantage of Kyle Larson this week at nine to one. Um, look at that. From his win last year, he led almost a hundred laps. He was in. He started the uh, race in ninth. And seriously, when was the last time you you, you were getting Kyle Larson being the defending champ of a race, and he is the what fifth choice, fifth or sixth choice at nine to one? So yeah, that's why I came really close to taking him. I just couldn't fit him. I I I, I came close. And look, that th th this is a good time to bring this up. I've talked up Toyota in this particular race, and understandably so. They should be talked up. But you have to take advantage of these other non-Toyota drivers because it's almost like, even though I completely agree with the odds and the fact that Toyota has the top four drivers uh, in this race as, as far as the odds... At this point, before qualifying, of course, I, I still think you should take advantage of these other drivers because Toyota, this is all about what they've done this year. It's sort of like what we were talking about last week. They have to do it first. You know, we're going all in on Toyota, but they haven't won here this year at this particular track. So, and again, they're better. So you would think, hey, they got a good history here. They got some of these drivers that have good histories here. They're even better this year, so it's a no-brainer, right? That's why you agree they should be the manufacturer to beat definitely. But Toyota has not won a race here in the last three. So it's not like, hey, Toyota, they've won four of the last five trips here, and they have all this other good stuff. So there is a little bit of a glitch in the stats that opens up possibilities for Ford and Chevy drivers. Because Ford and Chevy drivers have won here the last three visits. Toyota has not. And Larson might be one of those drivers, a non-Toyota driver that could take advantage of it. Joey Logano. Now here is the best long shot play of the week. CJ and I both agree. I have Bowman in as well. Wow. Look at that. 22 to 1 and that's all based on the season he's having but come on i mean we know joey logano is capable of turning it on look at that look at those stats uh, even recently look, look at that 16 of the last 19 are top 10s and 11 of those are top fives a couple wins the 651 laps he's led in that stretch that's it. That, that's all he has. So the first 10 races here, I believe it was, he's not, he did not lead a lap. All 651 have come in the last 19, and he's 22 to 1. And last year, okay, he finished 4th and 7th. So uh, I don't know. The, the only reason he's 22 to 1 is because of how he's racing. And I'm sorry, but that's not good enough. Now, if he was in a really big slump and uh, he had not had maybe even a top 15 this year, well, that would be different. But he does have an 11th last week and a 9th a few races back. And, and this is Joey Logano, man. This is a champion a couple of years ago. What are, we, what are we talking about here? 22 to 1? Here's a nice long shot. Now, this is the one long shot that I'm not going to invest a lot in. But, hey, you know what? He's 90 to 1. I'd throw a couple bucks on, on McDowell. Why not? And that's because I'm only looking at his recent history, which is all you should do with McDowell. Last year, he finished 6th. And that's his only top 10. He was 11th at Bristol, and he was 8th at Phoenix. All right? Now, maybe he gets lucky. He's, he's, he's having a pretty decent night. And he winds up in a good position and I'm getting 90 to 1. So, yeah, like I said, I'm not liking him like Logano and Bowman, but I think he's worth a buck or two. Reddick, 15 to 1. Now, Reddick, same thing, sort of like Chastain. 
uh, okay, 15 to 1, 20 to 1. I'm, all right, so, so, so what, should I consider them? Well, the only thing, though, uh, is why I probably would go with Chastain. I'm getting a little bit better odds because he's never had a top 10. Um, but he, as you can see, the last time he was here, he had his best race. He was on the pole, and he led 81 laps. So, And, and by the way, the other race in April last year, he started fifth. Um, but he hasn't shown me anything at the two racetracks that are the most important, Bristol and Phoenix. If he showed me something there, I might have taken him. But the, you know, that's just that that's killer for me right there. He is driving a Toyota though, so we'll see. But I, I just at this point, I think I needed a little bit more than fifteen to one. Here is the last of the best drivers who actually happens to be my favorite this week. This is the one that I am going with the most, Martin Truex Jr. I'm getting better odds than Bell and Hamlin. So similar, a little bit, to a couple of weeks ago when I had three heavy favorites and I went with one, Hamlin. I'm hoping to get lucky again this week by taking one of them, getting the better odds with Truex. Because look at see if we're gonna compare say Hamlin at four to one, Truex extremely comparable as far as his career numbers, and even lately look at that twelve top twelves out of fourteen, eight of those top fives that's over fifty percent since the last uh, what seven years he's been here, he's been in the top five with three wins, and during that stretch he's led over thirteen hundred laps. He's now what really put it over the top for me as my top pick this week. Second at Bristol, led 54 laps. Remember, he took the lead uh, over Denny late, and then it was track. It was they were getting into the traffic. Look, Hamlin was the better driver, and he proved it down that last 50 lap run, whatever it was. But Truex took the lead a couple of times, very very short leads, but he scared Hamlin. And was not able to beat him, but he was right there. And then Phoenix, when he finished seventh, remember that was just bad luck because he just he needed one more caution. If he got a caution, I think he wins the race. He was leading, and he was out of sequence. Um, by the time he got back into into the top ten, it was too late. But and I'm not saying he was the best car. But he had a good car, and he just needed a little luck. He didn't get it. So that was another strong performance at Phoenix. And then so you have the two similar tracks. That's strong. By the way, he's led 56 or more laps in 10 of the last 14 races. And he's led 80 or more in 9 of the last 14 races. The only, if you want to call it negative, is his last three races, 7th, 11th and 7th so no top fives that's the new car and 74 laps led uh which is and again that's combined um so th that's the only thing that it but that to me goes away with the performance of bristol and phoenix this year and i'm getting a couple more points i'm getting six to one on true x instead of four to one Bubba Wallace, uh, I just wanted to show him because, look, 22.5, that's bad. But the good thing is he led 80 laps in July, finishing 12th, which I believe might have been his best finish. So that's uh, the only reason why I think it's worth popping Bubba Wallace up there at 35 to 1. All right, let's go with the picks. There they are. So as you can see, like I said, CJ is going not only with Bell and Hammer, but he's also going with Shrugs and Gibbs. He's going all, all Toyota. He's not screwing around. He's like, all right, if I win, I can go six for seven. I'm getting my money back, basically. Well, actually, if he if he wins this week, he could, yeah, he could make uh, 20 bucks or something like that. And there's his top three, Hammer, Bell. He does have Larson there. So even though he's, he's going with the top four, in the, uh, the top four uh, odds drivers, including all, to all Toyotas, he is going with Larson as one of his top three. For me, 
again, I'm going Truex, Hamlin, then Bell. Gibbs was actually the driver that made it fourth out of the three. Um, and that is just, even though I'm getting better odds, the top three, that's, that's not necessarily the odds. That's just who do I think are the top drivers, okay, and this week. And I'm going, and so historically, you have to say it's Trucks and Hamlin. You just have to. Um, Bell is in there just because of how he's doing recently. But again, he hasn't won here yet. And then the two long shots. So those are the picks for this week's race. And that is the preview for the Toyota Owners 400 